Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Thursday, September 20th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. HP has reported that it might be moving back to the smartphone. Intel has announced that they will be hosting a press showcase on September 27th, and Dell is leveraging a supercomputer that is being installed at the University of Texas at Austin. Here to make sense of it all, we're joined by SiliconANGLE founder John Furrier with breaking analysis on some of today's headlines. Hi, John. Thanks for joining us. Hey, Kristen. Morning. How are you? I'm doing great. So HP CEO Meg Whitman announced that in order to continue to compete as a computing company, it must once again design and sell smartphones. So what's her justification behind the, that thought process? Well, I think obviously Meg Whitman is the new CEO and she's taking over basically two other CEOs, three other CEOs that essentially wrecked HP as a company which is kind of well documented. So essentially what everyone's talking about right now is should HP make smartphones? Because Apple right now, we talked about this last time we talked about Apple hitting 700 on the stock price and just kicking you know butt all through the smartphone and you got the Android market. But the question is, should HP get into that market? They've had two failed attempts in the past, most recently in the last CEOs, Mark Hurd and uh, Leo Apotecker, where they bought WebOS for a huge amount of money and fumbled that software opportunity and really embarrassed themselves in the smartphone business. And prior to that really was, I don't really count because it was more Windows based legacy, you know, uh, pre smartphone generation stuff. So, you know, HP has essentially, you know, one major failed effort in the modern era and one kind of old failure. But right now I think that's the big debate. Personally, it's a great move for HP. I've been very vocal on, the, on my blog as on the cube saying that HP must have a smartphone they have to do it. If not, they might as well just get out of the PC business altogether, um, which is something that I've been saying they should not do. And having a leadership position in smartphones is definitely doable for HP. They've done it before twice. And uh, so I think they can do it again. They have the, the capability with their manufacturing and hardware experience and supply chain. So HP returning to a WebOS device, uh, why would that be a good move? Well, HP has such a huge portfolio of products. They own the enterprise. They're a big giant like IBM is. And ultimately, if they want to have a, an end user component to their business, which they've had for years with their PCs, they need to have a smartphone because the PC is moving from a desktop to mobile. That's really kind of well documented and talked about. And obviously the trends support that. So HP must move to the edge of the network, which is the consumerization of IT, bring your own device to work, and compete directly with Apple in that market. And they can be a supplier of smartphones. They have the capability. So it just takes some focus and some engineering on HP's part. I give them two years to do it, maybe three tops, but, but certainly they were a non-player in, in the nine, 1990 time frame. And within you know three short years, they were really number one, number two in that market. So I know it's a different time now. Um, and with WebOS still kind of hanging around, they could actually reboot that and bring that in and support that with Android and all their other peripherals. So HP definitely has a viable shot at being a leader in the smartphone, at least in the top one, two, three positions of, of uh, suppliers and smartphones. So given that they had a previous failure, is there any worry that it might be too late for them to get back in the game? I mean, all the people out there who really don't have any experience in the marketplace will say, oh, that they can't do it. But they're looking at the, uh, HP trying to beat Apple, and that's ultimately not the goal of HP right now. I think the decision for HP is clearly, do they go for it or not? Not so much can they put out a product in a year to beat Apple. I think the strategy is pretty clear in any kind of you know, business case or a competitive strategy uh, you know, textbook. Come out with a Me Too product immediately commoditize all the features, meet the current set expectations, and then build on that. So with WebOS, they still do have a viable plan. And what's interesting about, wild card, about the wild card about WebOS is with the whole movement of open source growing so fast, we've seen the big data with Hadoop, that being open source, WebOS can find a nice niche and not compete directly with Android. So you know the, the timing of WebOS, you know, when HP bought the company from Palm, was really at a pivotal point when Android was really exploding onto the scene. So, you know, WebOS can find a nice home and coexist with Android. And I think that's a viable strategy. And certainly HP's got the expertise on the hardware side. That's a no-brainer. Can they, can they play in the ecosystem and find a position? So, you know, I would say that's going to require some talent on HP's part at the executive level. 
and let's see if Meg Whitman has the you know technical chops or can find the technical people within her organization to do that. Now, Intel has recently announced that they're going to be hosting a press event on September 27th. What can we expect to be discussed there? Well, I don't know. I didn't receive an invitation because it was a different group within Intel. Maybe I, I didn't see it yet, but we were at IDF, so we saw a good preview of some of their technology. And what you can expect from Intel is essentially to kind of move ahead of the conversations around who's got a better tablet and talk specifically about the chipset and the solutions that they're offering. So at the Intel Developer Forum in San Francisco, which we covered um, in depth, the, the movement is towards an integrated solution at the chipset level around power savings and more performance with storage and, and compute. So with flash and solid state drives, um, flash memory and solid state drives is changing the game on a developer basis. So from a mobility standpoint, expect Intel to, to release high performing chips that uh, can support uh, longer battery life and lower power consumption. And that's consistent with you know, what Apple recently introduced with the iPhone 5. So along with their announcement about the showcase that they're going to be hosting, they also revealed a list of some of the partners that'll be there. Any reason why Microsoft was not on that list? Um, <laughs> don't know. I think there's some politics involved. I haven't got the official word, but the scuttlebutt that I've been hearing in Silicon Valley is that Intel is really wanting to be very OEM specific. Intel's always never really wanted to compete with uh, their suppliers that they, I mean, they, this, their partners that they supply technology to. So Intel traditionally supplies uh, chips and hardware solutions to HP's Dells of the world, and Microsoft is a software player. So as Intel moves into the cloud era, mobile and social, we've heard that they're moving away from being a component processor and components to more solutions. So my guess is there's some sort of software angle there, and that's really what's going to be introduced at this event. So. Um, it's not so much a competing tablet per se, but it's more of you know new software-driven infrastructure type solutions. There's a lot of manufacturers out there who are claiming their tablets are meant to be used for business, but they're still feeling more like a consumer device. Who do you think Dell is going to be targeting with a tablet device? I think Dell is going to be targeting you know you know normal people who have a specific need who are not sophisticated enough to really understand the benefits of the iPhone and the iPad relative to the, you know, all the geeky features. Um, certainly the iPhone and the I iPad in particular on the tablet market has that kind of tech feel, luxury feel to it, you know, as uh, Mark Rizenhock, as I talk about tech jewelry. So Apple caters to that kind of luxury sports car-like mentality of, of, the, of the tablet market. Yet there's a whole huge set of growing marketplace where just on the pure numbers that Android has proven that there are people who just want, you know, basic features of a tablet. So I expect Dell to really come in and hit that sweet spot where they're differentiated not so much on the luxury aspect of it, but still provide a high quality product and then integrate specifically their solutions in small, medium sized business and other features that make it more real friendly around basic business and you know, usable stuff. Not so much uh, the high tech gadgetry features that are on the high end phone. So I see it to be a mid range you know, lower high-end, mid-range product down to an entry level and making it easy to use. So I think Dell is a real shot there. So in other Dell news, uh, Dell has announced that there's a supercomputer that they're creating in Austin. Can you tell us what is the PowerEdge C8000 series? Um, well, I mean, obviously Dell has huge, has grown from being a commodity hardware to essentially what they call industry standard, which is buzzwords for we're not cheap, but we're low cost. Um, and now that they, they have a server marketplace that's pretty strong that compete directly with IBM and HP. And so it's just supercomputers, essentially the high-end kind of high-performance computers that, that's designed for what they call web scale. Web scale is for companies like, that just explode out of the woodwork, like Facebook, Pinterest, all the companies that we know about that go from essentially zero to zillions of users, uh, millions of users and require massive horsepower. So as companies get into that kind of scale, and want to host it on premise or in their data center, and they're going to need high power gear. That's what this is really targeting. Um, but Dell's conflicted here because what ultimately this means is is that you know a lot of these solutions are going to come from their what they call small, medium sized business marketplace. So uh, it's it's hard for Dell to really provide um, the solutions when you have a company that's small, medium sized business and then all of a sudden starts buying hundreds and hundreds of servers because of the growth. An example of that would be a company like Pinterest. 
uh, and others like that, where these web scale companies can come out of nowhere to just have massive explosive growth. So Dell's challenge is twofold, provide a hardware solution for that, services, and then field personnel to grow that. So this investment is really about those two elements, having high performance gear wrapped with good software and also field support to support it. Well, John, we appreciate the analysis and I'm sure we'll have you back again on soon. Thank you. Thanks. And remember, you can follow the news of the day and get the latest breaking analysis here at the News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.